Last time you saw me, we were working on the station area. And on this episode, we're going to be working our way alongside, well, down the platform and towards the bridge. And what will we be doing? Well, I'll be showing you very, very shortly. So let's go up into the loft and check it out. My name's Tris and this is Double O'Neill. I've been wondering what to do with the back section for a while because when you kind of start with things you kind of well for me I put the track down and I thought oh, I'll have some kind of rolling hill type thing behind and that ended up not being the case for me so since then I've just kind of not really liked what I've looked at and I wanted to change it so I'm gonna flatten it off I'm going to use some of this foam board. I've got some longer sections um, and I'll put that behind there. And my plan is to have um, just basically trees to match what's going on here. Um, some will be tall, some will be short. So I've got a load of knock trees. Um, I'm looking forward to using them because they look great. Uh, and then when I get to here, actually not sure, but it's going to be flat at this point. And then we can decide what we're going to do after that. Um, I'll make it up as I go along as uh, with most things. Um, yeah, so enjoy the ride. So I've got my bit of foam board, which has got a bit of a bend to it because I've had it for a good year sitting up in the loft. Should have had it sitting on something flat, I guess, but fine. Um, I've cut out my thickness uh, for here. But what I didn't think about is the fact that it tapers off over here. So I'm going to slice up this front bit and just add a bit of taper, a bit of a manual taper. It'll be fine. And uh, we fit that in. And then, yeah, we, I guess, stick a bit underneath this side cut another strip to go across there and then that's that side done really. I've glued it down with PVA glue um, so I've got this section here the bit over there and I've got some weights that held it in place. I left that overnight to dry probably didn't need to do it overnight it's just I went to bed so that's now solid on here and we can move on to the next stage. Um, what you might notice is well, you can hear those birds in the background, maybe quite noisy. Um, I got some just some tissue um, and some glue and kind of made a bit of a join between the two. I'm not too worried about over here because I'll be having lots of bushes and things. Um, and I did that a bit over the part further up there. Now what I'm going to do is use um, some brown paint, just the normal kind of hobby craft type stuff and just kind of work around the area that you might see um, we're going to be putting bushes and things up so we're not going to see it to make sure we don't have any issues with the back scene getting painted brown I've got just a bit of paper here that I'll move along there we go and get that to there I'll paint those areas bring this along and go from there so we can keep it nice
I've left this overnight to dry and I've been having a little think about what I want to do. I messaged uh, Andy Hudson, who I talk to quite a bit now about model railway bits, and he's been really helpful uh, because we talked about what to do behind here and on here and I just had this kind of plan to kind of use trees and um, finely foliage to just cover all this area which is it's quite intense there and um, so what I ended up after talking to him about was um, to have, I'm thinking I'm going have my trees here and my finely foliage in the back here and we get to kind of this point here and then maybe, I don't know, something to kind of Tight, like blend it back in here because we've got houses and things and he pointed out obviously this is going up here down there and back up there so obviously I can't just match it here and then come back up there or anything but uh, the one thing I want to do is um, add a bit more contour as, as he pointed out um, and kind of add a little bit of a higher level just here so when we come to let's say some static grass or whatever we do afterwards there's something to look at there um, what I want to do is have a signal in this area as well. I want to have a little little hut that will sit here. I'll have one of my line side huts as well sitting down here. Just grab it. This isn't the one that I'm going to use, I don't think, but that'll be sitting here um, a bit further down. Um, and then I'll have a signal, I think, about here. Um, I need to double check uh, how far away it needs to be from the station. But when I spoke to Tony from Tony's Trains, um, there was a scenario where I think he talked about that's like a coach and a half away, so I'll have it here. I think that's what he said. I need to double check. So yeah, signal there. Um, so then I'll have some, I'll put ballast out here um, to, to, to here, so it's something to walk over to um, alongside the building bit there. Um, and then I'm not ballasting the track yet because I want to put some point rodding down um, at later stage. So I'm going to try and keep the ballasting to a certain point. Um, yeah, to this building, make a little square here, um, and then the rest of it will be the yeah, static grass, and then yeah, some bushes around here and static grass going to here, and maybe I can utilise this for something else at a later point. Maybe this is, I don't know, some storage area for something. I don't know. Um, it's trying to think about it in a way that I then don't want to rip it up later on. So I'll keep looking at some pictures of platforms, um, but I think for now what I'll do is I'll add in my trees. Um, and my finely foliaged here, um, but I'll add in some, I don't know, it's like, it's like layer height here, maybe put some polystyrene in here which I can paint brown and then we can cover that afterwards. So I've had a little bit of a think and I'm just going to make it a small mound, I don't need to put anything fancy on it, um, I'm going to stick it down and it just means that when I do static grass it, there is some undulation, it's not just completely flat. I've got this lovely tool, um, it makes us stink, <laughs> um, it's good to wear a mask, very good to wear a mask, because in the loft with this obviously polystyrene it's not the nicest, but it slices through nice and easy, so I'm just going to do a low level little section and we'll just trim. To try and make something look natural is always difficult when it's been man-made, but hopefully we can shape it to a point that, yeah, it's looking kind of natural. But when we put the static grass on, I find it always blends it after. So I've stuck down some other thin pieces to add that undulation and I'm going to paint it brown, see how it comes out and when it comes to static grassing I'll probably put a bit of tape over the little gaps just so it looks all a little bit smoother and it should be good. That's all dry now. And my next plan is to 
I think add some static grass to that area just to get something on it. I've got my bit of tape to go in the gap. It's like a orangey colour. I'm hoping it doesn't show up. I could always put a bit of paint on there, but I was thinking on the gaps, just pop it in here. Some uh, frog tape, it's a darker colour, so I just thought oh, that'd be right. I'll use that. So my other tape that I've got is blue, so so that will stick on there and then we can add in, obviously it's not completely dry because my fingers have gone brown but yeah maybe we leave it a little bit longer to dry up and let's dust this with some brown Okay, so what I'm going to do is use static grass on here, which will actually be mostly covered up. Um, but because I'm going to be using some static grass that I'm not so keen on, if you do see bits, it's just something that represents some um, some grassiness. So I'm just going to put a layer on, and really, it's going to be the finely foliage that's going to be doing most of the work. So I don't have to go right to the edge because the fine leaf's going to be there, as well as the trees. They'll be doing a lot of the work as well. Hopefully I don't get too much of the static grass all over the platform. We go to about here. nice and simple this process pour it in the top and off we go Put it up most of the way put our lid back on what we want to do is have our pin somewhere so it creates that static charge but I also don't want to knock off the features of my railway so or platform so we've got to be careful So that's quite a dark colour, but that's okay because that's going to get hidden quite a lot. Um, but it just means that we've got, you know, I'm going to be putting the green scenes grass to blend in over this to come over this way. Um, and then, yep, I have my finely foliage popping in there with my trees. So we'll let that all dry, hoover off the excess, and then we'll have some fun with trees and bushes.
it looks spiky as it does and then I need to layer it up with some um, get some matte spray on there um, and then go on top of that and give it a bit more texture. I'd argue that kind of works. We've got the trees behind it. Oh, we're having some the foliage bits going on here, some trees and stuff like that. I think it'll be all right if we have a look at that. See, that is a different color, but it's gonna not really gonna see it too much behind there. So I'm looking forward to doing that. So I let this all dry, and then I'll hoover it up, and then I'll maybe give it a little bit more of some layering in places. But I'm not gonna go crazy on it because I think at the moment we've got some nice undulation, and it should be good. Now that's dry. I'm going to carry on and use this matte sealer. I've got this from Hobbycraft, as you can see by the, the label. But I've been wondering about getting hold of something, and I actually tried a clear lacquer for cars, and that just goes on really wet. So I thought I'd try this out. I haven't tried it before, so we can see how well it works. I understand it's just matte varnish. I'm assuming matte sealer is matte varnish. It mentions here clear acrylic varnish, so I'm like, fine, let's use that. Just make sure that I cover this back section here when I do spray it. I'm only going to add um, a layer to some of this, not all of this. This front, I'm going to kind of leave it alone a little bit. Just where this join is, so you can just see that crease. Um, we'll just work a little bit of that area, and then that'll be it. And we can move on to sticking down some trees. Got some more of the medium green scenes grass. We'll apply that over the top. And you get that extra bit. You see it standing up and really starts to look realistic. I want to talk to you about trees. I've been collecting trees for a little while and yes, I could make them and I would like to. I've been tinkering with the idea of it and been messing around with bits of wire and learning and watching so many YouTube videos on how to do it, looking in books. It's just tons. I've, my dad's been doing it for years, um, getting uh, wire and soldering it together and twisting it and soldering it, twisting it, soldering it. Um, but I've been picking them up as well. Um, as uh, when I travel abroad, um, pick them up from the shops there. A lot of the knock ones are available, and they do some large trees, which I want to put in. Um, so um, other people that do large trees are Wood and Scenics, and these work out I think about 11, 12 pounds each. Which, considering how much is going on with them, and if you think about how much time it would take to make them, I think it's worth the money. So I've picked them up, but I do want to make some of my own. Um, here's another one here. It looks nice. It's an oak tree. Um, and it's, it's a big one. And one of the reasons why I want big trees is in this area here, I've got obviously where this ends, okay? So obviously I'm never gonna hide it perfectly, but if you have some of these large trees, you know, in that area, which are pretty huge, um, you know, they must be many, many hundreds of years old. I'm hoping that they will kind of hide off that little corner. So we'll have a play with that. Some of the trees that I've got to kind of bulk it all up are this pack by Knock. Obviously Knock don't sponsor me or anything, but this worked out at £20 um, that Knock did. And you get six trees in here, um, but they don't have any flock on them. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put some of my green scenes flock on there, and I've got some Knock flock as well. So I'm going to have a play and uh, make them a bit nicer. But what we do first is we stick in the big trees, 
And then amongst underneath where you'd have growth will be the finely foliage by Wood and Scenics. And we'll pop that all in and we just kind of work our way along and we'll end up having maybe some of the nicer trees at the front and go from there. All right, we've got all our trees out here. Um, they look all right. It's just they're straight from the, I don't know. It's, it's hard to show you, but the it looks like they're not finished um, when you look at these, but they're 20 quid for six with good armatures going on there. So my plan is to squeeze them in to some of these other places if we can. Um, I have other things that can go in then, like I said, finding foliage, but what we're gonna do is we're gonna sprinkle on. So I use matte varnish over the top, sprinkle on the top with um, the foliage, and yeah, we'll hopefully get something that looks nice. We'll dust it with our matte varnish that we used on the uh, the grass. So I would just dust it over the top. The hope. It will stick on. Remember to put a mask on when you're doing this kind of thing. So as we want it to sit on top, I'll start with these leaves over the top. You can give it a softer look. And the reason I'm pouring it into a tray is so we can collect it all afterwards. And we use it on the others. That'll be enough. We put that aside and then we do the same to this big one. With these all done, I'm going to use my lighter shade. I don't know if I'm going to regret it. I'm kind of happy with how these are coming out. Not too keen on how these have been made. They're just kind of a bit bulky in places from the original way. But like I said before, it was 20 quid for six, so can't complain. Um, and do you know what? If I want it to be any better, I should do it myself, shouldn't I? That'd be one for the future. So I'm going to cover them again with my matte sealer and then this color. Let's go for it. Oh, I like the, the colour of that, it's nice. I like the bright colours, I know some people might not like it. I see a lot of dark layouts and that's not really for me. There is the spring kind of look is what I enjoy really. Not be late spring I guess, going into summer. 
Yeah. And then what I do is I'll seal it up with my sealer. So then hopefully it stays on. And that one is done. So I'll do the rest and we'll put them on the layout and I'll come back to you once I've done that. With the trees installed, I'm happy-ish. It doesn't quite look right at the moment, but at the same time, it looks way better than it did. The beauty of everything that we do is that we can rip it up and start again if we need to. So now I'm going to use this fine leaf foliage, which comes in like little mini trees if you really want it to be. You know, go and wedge it in. Um, I'm going to use it for my bushes, so you've got a lot of growth. And that's going to go into all these little gaps. And hopefully it will look brilliant. So let's get that in. With the finely foliage in, I've used light and medium finely foliage by Woodland Scenics. And um, you can see how it kind of blends things in quite nicely. So it starts becoming, I don't know, a blend of things as opposed to just one or two. Um, genuinely happy now with these. Got my apple tree here. So Hornby apple tree. Looks nice. Um, unfortunately, it isn't edible apples, so they'll have to stay on there. And then down the back here, I've added the fine new foliage in there just to kind of separate the back scene from the layout and I think it works quite well. On this area here, I wanted to put a signal in and I like the idea of having a short one in here, but also I wanted it to match. I was going to go back to a normal long one. It's only got the polystyrene under here, so I can hopefully drill a hole by hand without needing a power drill. 
I'll pop the signal in here, so that would be on the left hand side, uh, which would be good, so I kind of went wrong before. And then on the end, I want to put like a little hut, and I thought I can either use one of the ones that I've already used, well, made before, um, but I've also got a wheels kit that I got from Tony's Trains of Rugby. I think about popping that there, um, so maybe we'll do that. Yeah, so let's get that signal in. I want it to sit flat because screwing it in it starts leaning forward. Put a little wedge underneath it. And then when we add the ballast over the top, hopefully it'll work out alright. Moving over to some modeling of a different kind is putting together this Will's lamp hut, which I didn't realize it, but you get two in there. It probably says it on the side and you can probably see through the back. It is, it's a corrugated steel construction, but this is plastic, um, but looks like that. And you get, like I said, the two kits in there, they're identical. You get a back, a side, which is blank, and then another side which takes the fire buckets which would have the sand in which would be of course thrown on things that might be on fire um, always good to have them around when you're around steam engines which are full of fire um, there's a roof then there's a gas fence and then some oil drums and then the buckets that you can see on the grey sprue I'll be using my own oil drums from my double O'Neill uh, designs website um, they're kind of no edges when you glue these together you get a little little edge if there's they've glued together and i thought i use my ones i've done enough of them these are little buckets i go through the stages of getting rid of any of the flashing and any kind of bits from when you clip it off which doesn't take much i've got some tamiya files here and they take it off nicely and then any kind of bits of flashing as well i use the back edge of the knife not back edge the the sharp bit of the edge knife <laughs> and then we give that a clean up I'm going to use the Tamiya um, cement, very good glue this, it doesn't take much and it glues very well and it's got a fantastic nib on it this Tamiya stuff. Honestly if you were thinking about getting a new pot of um, the glue that glues the plastic, um, it's good, it's very good and uh, I'm really pl pleased I got it because you can control it as well with that lovely nib on the end. So glue it together, it's quite simple, I was, I was thinking, oh, how, you know, what if I don't get it square, but I think it's going to be fine. They put the two ends on, it doesn't matter if it starts tapering, everything is still a bit soft, push the other end on and it becomes pretty square, just make sure it's not become, um, well, out of square because you've turned it into a little diamond, 
Um, but once you put the roof on, you can see and see what you've done. Um, if you ever have any trouble where it's glued together and it's not at the right angle, you could always soften all the joints back off with another application of glue, which is always handy. Put the vent on top, nice and simple. That just drops on there. Looks nice, right? And we have both of them here, really quick to put together. Actually, got a nice enjoyable kit. Now I'm primering them with some, it's actually a gray, always looks white in the pictures. It's a very light gray um, by Vallejo primer. I pop it into the airbrush, put a little bit of thinner with it and off you go. Um, I just need to put enough on to give the paint something to stick to. And so I don't go mad and lose all the detail with the priming stage before I've even got to the painting stage. After that, I add some of the light stone color by Railmatch, which is typical of the Great Western Railway. They'd have a light stone and a dark stone and dark stone to pick up details. But for the roof, I'm going for a gray. Um, that will be a simple kind of dark color, I guess, that they painted on there. Um, it's just a grey from, I can't remember what even grey I use, it's just a mix of black and white together to create the grey there. But after this is done, I do come back and dry brush it, which I don't show in the video. With that done, I run my dark stone into the doorway and the window that's at the back. That's the only place I need to put it, I work my way around, and I do like the way that these colours complement each other. They kind of look similar in regards to the, the shade spectrum um, and I will come back and do a little bit of weathering and put some like ink washes in kind of cracks in different places not going to get mad on it then we've got our buckets I'm going to paint them red and then after that I'll use some black paint to paint the top of it and do the handlebar to simulate a little cover that's sitting on there at the time um, I guess to stop water pouring in when it's raining and stuff like that. I don't know. Um, but yeah, so that just has a nice little black coat where it's needed. And then using some super glue, I like to use rocket glue quite a lot. The only reason I use the rocket glue, it's just a thick glue that I have. Other glues are available with a certain thickness of viscosity or viscosity of glue. Um, and I pop that on. They go on nice and easily. I was going to paint them after gluing them on. Um... You know, obviously paint everything white and do it together, but I thought, well, what if I get the red over the side and then it takes ages to go over the top of light stone because the round match pigments aren't super strong. So that's it. It's together. Nice and simple. And then looking at both of them, I've done a little bit of weathering on there. I did actually come back over with the airbrush after this um, and dust around the sides so they've got a little bit of murkiness from sitting next to well, some grass and grime growing up it. Um, but what we should do is put it on the layout. I'm going to put the one up and I'll put that on this nice gravelly section that you saw me putting up earlier behind our nice signal. I will be blending this in more. What I want to do is put gravel on my track first before doing that and then I'll put some weeds around um, the various parts of it. But you can see there, it, well for me, it fits in very, very nicely. It's a little hut um, to the use of the people of the railway whenever they need it. I'm sure it's got some lovely things in there. Um, a couple of old brooms and bits and bobs. Some lamps, as described on the description as well. So, yeah. But I'm honestly pleased with that. We'll see some more views in a bit. But what we'll do is we'll move on to something that I've been wanting to do for some time. One thing, which was name the railway, which I was going to call it Pearly, which is based off where I come from. Um, and... It is a station sign. Nothing spectacular, but it's my station sign. And I've been meaning to do this for a while. And I printed off a bunch of these. I did four, in fact. So then I've got a few more for the platform. What do I want to do with this? I don't want to just paint it up. I want to put it on a base. I want to put flowers um, on it with stones around the outside, like I see at a number of stations that I've been to when visiting Heritage Railways which is something you should do too. You'll enjoy it if you haven't already been to any, if not many. So I just work out a rough width on some plastic card. Plastic card because, well, I've got it. It's stiff. It will work fine. I'm sure you could use a bit of cardboard if you really want to. Um, the only difference with cardboard, maybe it will change shape over time. The plastic card um, should hold its, you know, its shape, um, though you know, time will tell, because this is going to be sitting flat against the platform. I just cut it out with the scalpel, and then into my one strip, and then I make four smaller strips, 
with the scalpel blade here. I've zoomed in a bit here. Um, and yeah, you can see, and you do a skim or two, and then you crack it apart, and there you go. I use my super glue, and then that drops in place. If you're holding things on and you happen to have some activator for super glue, you can always dust that on, and that'll hold it in place. But now that's done. I'm using this green scenes um, material. I'm not sure exactly what they call it, it just had a number on the side, which you would have just seen. Um, but you could probably use all sorts of things for this. It just It's a large ballast, basically, in my view. It's kind of ballast that you'd use on, you know, G-gauge or, or O-gauge, or I don't know, gauge one, I don't know, um, railways. Maybe not G-gauge, but maybe uh, gauge one railways. Um, but yeah, it's quite chunky, and I want to use that to represent my stones. And to hold it on, I'm just going to use some PVA glue and run that around the edges with a cocktail stick. Um, this will be... Uh, basically a two-step process so I do my first bit because I've done some already so I can tell you what I'm doing um, and then once that's dried I see what falls off I add some on afterwards and go from there so that's quite nice so I go and do four of these um, I did wonder about maybe doing some more and then later I can stick on some other signs for other parts of the railway that have different names but I can go through the fun process of that later on so I put it in my little pots that I have here and I give it a little shake around and you don't have it going all over the table then it's all in here and then you shake off the excess of what you don't need let that dry because you can always pick it off later then you come back and I put little glue blobs in where I feel I need it where I th feel it needs to be a bit thicker and then I go and get it inside and get a stick on that and then it's basically done if I really need to I can go over again on areas that I'm not happy with but it's quite a simple process. Now I'm going to prime it with black um, primer by Vallejo. And I'm using that so then I can firstly do the black behind pearly. And then make all the stones and the base black. So there's no whites of the plaster. Um, plaster, plastic card um, getting in the way. You know, showing up and kind of spoiling the look of it. After that, get my dark stone out. Do the legs of the post because that's what they seem to have on them when you look at them at the railways. They've got a nice dark stone on the Great Western Railway. If you don't already know, I like the Great Western Railway. Then I go and dry brush, well, with quite a bit of paint, and it looks like on this one, um, these stones. Um, and then I come back with some lighter colours, lighter colours again. So we'll have our stones that will really stand out. Um, and something that I'm honestly quite pleased with how it came out, because I thought, well, what colour will I paint them? Um, but I'll go for those greyish tones that we see and there you go nice and greyish and then we'll do a fine job once we've got the flowers in there but I need to paint the pearly white as well as the border around it and this I do in I think I did three coats in total white I've always found to be a color that or oh, is it a color um that um goes on like it's always got a bad pigment um or if it has got a thick pigment to it you end up getting a blotchy kind of surface. So I always end up watering it down, um, do a layer, water it down, obviously, and then do my second layer and then third layer. Um, and then it normally comes out quite nicely. Now I've got some coffee um, leftovers here. Uh, I don't drink coffee, but my partner does. And uh, she normally throws these away. And I thought, hang on, let's hold on to them. And what we'll do is I'll let the dry them out. Um, it's from the Italian style coffees, I guess. Um, where it's in this kind of form, um, it's not in the bean form, so to speak, and it looks like soil to me, so I thought, well, let's hold on to it, um, and in future, I'm going to hold on to all of it and have a huge supply of um, a coffee-smelling soil. It doesn't smell that strong, actually, after it's been used and dried out. Uh, it's a very subtle smell to it, and you don't want to sniff too much, otherwise it'll walk up your nose, because you'll find that it's quite light, and you don't want to have that happening. Just like with the stones, giving it a shake with the glue, I'm about to hold it on. I'm only doing one layer of this, that's all I need. It's just if you look past it, it's not going to be black, have a nice brown to it. But we can use this again for other areas of the layout. But there you see, a nice soily looking um, bit of, oh, soil. Um, and obviously, do that yourself, you know, speak to any coffee drinkers that might use the Italian style coffees and say, do you mind if I have some of this? Maybe if you pop to a, a Costa Coffee or Starbucks and ask them for their 
waist coffee bits might give you a funny look, but you could end up having a lot of material for your railway. So give it a go. Let me know what you think. And then I put some foliage in here. Well, not foliage, some flock. I found my various supplies of it. I kind of picked out some different colours that look all bushy to represent kind of those bushy leaves. And we've got a lot of growth here, haven't we? Of, um, well, green. And now we're adding in some yellow flowers. I can't tell you where I got these from. My dad gave them to me. And they were my granddad's that he picked up. And I have them in little bags with no description of where they came from. But there's lots of companies like Green Scenes that do the different colours of flowers. So you can have purples, pinks, reds, yellows, whites, whatever you like. And so I'm putting whites, yellows and reds on these. Um, and these aren't from the Green Scenes. These are just from the ones that my, my father had given to me. Um, which is very, very nice of him. Because I'm able to do this. And look at that. Actually, from a distance, you'd argue that they are flowers on a you know a little bed um, underneath a railway station sign once that's done i do kind of flatten them off in a little bit and wasn't quite happy with this i should have maybe used matte varnish but i think they would have gone flying away because it was all slight quite well, soft in there so i use isopropyl alcohol isopropyl alcohol say it properly um and that then soaks into it and then i use some watered down pva glue so then go and wick it in and hold it still. Now that's drying, I'm going to build up a couple of different bits for the layer. So these are some luggage bits by Dark Castings for my station. So our station staff can go and help out the dice people load their luggage or if there's big parcels. They can go on them little white metal models. I use a bit of super glue, stick it together and it's done. Then using a bit of, well, it's, I see it as a very odd red colour, um, but it's a brown primer by Vallejo. And I run that over and um, give them a primer in because they're going to get painted brown. I'll paint little black edges on them and they'll come out quite nicely. But I don't want to do too much focus on them, but I just thought I'd show you because I want to do some stuff for the station. You'll be thinking, well, why are you showing me this? There's lots to, to add here. So I dust it over with the darker brown here. I use a mahogany uh, by Vallejo on this one. I don't mind the colour. I need to get some more browns from their range. I seem to use about one brown when I paint anything. Now painting these bits here, I have a couple of people that I want to add to the station. I have the oil barrels and some parcel bags, which I guess have lots of mail in there. So I use some brown to first of all prime the bags and the barrels a bit. But the barrels are just going to give it a bunch of different colours. There'll be a slightly possibly rusty, not best looked after barrel and then paint a bit of black on them. And with the parcel bags, I just come over with various shades of sandy colours and I just dust it on really. Um, I don't put crazy amounts of time into all of this because they're just bags at the end of the day. The areas that I do want to put time into are the people that we're going to paint. Um, with these, I do that and I put an ink wash onto them to give them a bit more niceness. Um, and then just gentle dry brushes in places to kind of make everything look well, a bit more detailed. So happy with that. And then I paint my very nice people who are standing and sitting there very patiently um, looking forward to seeing what colours I'll dare to paint onto them. I never know what colours to paint of people in the 1940s. If you type in 1940s clothing on a um, website called Google, you'll find things. But you'll see them here. I've gone for browns and greys and more greys and kind of other types of grey. And they look alright. This guy's got lots of yellowy beiginess going on. And she's got a nice blue jacket on. So, and a hat to match a little bag that she's holding on to. And here is the sign in place. I was really pleased to put it in. And I think it looks nice. I'll put one down on this end. And I'm also going to put some in some other places. Which I'm not going to show you. But you'll see from time to time in other videos. The station has been quite bare since putting it in. And I felt that it needs some more things. So the bits that we built up earlier and painted we'll be putting the parcel bags in so obviously they're waiting for train to come by with i guess a small goods wagon there or van to then throw them in ready for some parcels to go off maybe even a royal mail coach van van or coach <laughs> comes by and these go inside there so it's kind of fun for me to add these i'm looking forward to adding more things like this onto the layout 
I like the idea of making it quite busy. Um, I've been looking at it for such a time that it's been just empty of people and things. So now I'll be adding in all sorts of bits, not just these bags, but I'm hoping to find some crates. I've actually drawn some up. I've got them on my website. I should probably use them. They've got a little sleeping dog in it. So I could have painted them up and put them on. On this side, I thought I'd put the, I don't know what these are, some form of trolley, um, wagon type thing that gets pulled around. Um, and I have a couple of different sizes of these and some from P&D Marsh, which I'm going to put on in a moment, uh, which is nice. P&D Marsh do a number of nice items that you can put on your railway. And, but putting them there, it's nice. They're loitering around, ready to help out the next person. Might even end up putting some little parcels and things on these over time. So this is the P&D um, trolley as well. You can see the milk churns that on there and parcels. And I put the man next to it as well. And he can just hang out there um, just doing his thing, working away very, very hard on the railway. And they paint these for you, which is great. Then we have our nice lady in blue. They're looking very smart, chatting to Bob. And then we have Shirley here, who's going to talk to Steve. He's going to drop in from the sky um, and he's going to say, hey, how are you doing? What are you up to today? And she's not really going to know what to say. She's like, you're new here, aren't you? So anyway, they go catch the train at some point. But you can see that background is looking, in my view, very nice. I'm going to put my station master in here. Quite happy to add him. He just gets popped in place. It's a little hole. Some of them have little pegs on the bottom. And then you drop them in place. Next, we have a guy reading a book i don't know what book he's reading you'll have to let me know in the comments i couldn't quite read the title but i'm sure it's something about steam engines and he's getting a bit of a i don't know time in figuring out you know what one will i be in today anyway he comes out of nowhere well give it a dust off first i'm trying to blow it <laughs> it's just quite bad got into some bits i'm like what am i doing anyway we go and drop in our nice man we'll call him roger Roger that. So Roger's reading his book there. Very happy with himself. And with the back scene, with the trees and the lambs. I don't know. I'm really pleased with it. And then we've got a guy that I've had for many years since I was young. I gave him a little paint up. It looks good. So this is the layout. I'm honestly really happy. And yeah, thank you for watching. I hope you've enjoyed all of this. I'd like to say a big thank you to all my patrons. If you'd like to become a patron, click on the link in the description help support the channel and everything that i do if you like what i do at least maybe consider subscribing to the channel and hitting the like and even leaving me a comment but my channel members and my patrons you've been very supportive and looked after me for a long time thank you very much i'll leave you with a couple of nice little pictures and a clip and i'll see you soon you all take care and i'll see you later bye bye